the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. One of my favorite things to think about is what might be the world's oldest musical instrument. Part of what I like about this question is we have pieces of the puzzle, but we'll probably never know the whole picture. So we kind of have to guess, which is fun. There was some point when our ancestors stopped just living in the world and started looking around at the materials and went, ooh, this object can improve my life. Most of the tools that we found made by our ancestors are made out of materials like stone or bone because these things last a long time. Some of these stone artifacts are over two million years old, but if they were shaping stones into tools, they were very likely working with things like wood and other materials that don't last millions of years. My best guess for the oldest instrument is probably an object we found rather than one that we made. In our video about the trumpet, we talked about the Magdalenian conch shell, which is somewhere between 10,000 and 17,000 years old. But the oldest musical instrument we have found so far is a flute made of bone, which is dated at over 40,000 years old. And flutes are a great contender for world's oldest instrument because they kind of just happen. Let me show you what I mean. Flutes are one of the simplest musical instruments you can make. For a flute to be called a flute, you need a hollow tube closed at one end and some holes. There, working flute. Objects like this happen just on their own. Now, I live on the prairies in Canada, so the plants here tend to be pretty small. But one plant that does super well is rhubarb. Even up here in Canada, they make gigantic leaves. And my parents have these great big rhubarb plants in front of their house. And I notice these giant stalks coming out. This is the flowering part of the rhubarb. So I walked up to my parents' rhubarb plant and picked off a stalk. And it was a pretty interesting object. First of all, it's hollow. Except it grows in these segments. And at each of these segment points, it closes off. So each of these segments is like a little hollow container. In a lot of ways, this reminded me of bamboo, which also grows hollow and has segments where it closes off, making it an excellent material to use to make a flute. Let's cut off a piece. Cut on the other side. Now I have a tube that is open at one end and closed at the other. Even before cutting holes in this, just having tubes of different sizes, our ancestors could have figured out how to make panpipes. But it's a bit of a leap from panpipes to a flute. So when did humans add the hole? Well, again, the hole might not have been added by humans. In this piece of rhubarb, there's a little hole right here that was probably made by an insect. So maybe one of our ancestors was playing around with this tube they found, using a stick to play around with a little hole burrowed by an insect. They keep working at it, blowing out the excess, when all of a sudden... So now I have this hollow tube with a hole, and it makes this amazing sound. So now I'm going to experiment. What happens if I add another hole? Well, now this one has a hole on both sides. So let's try this hole. Okay, so I figured out that blowing the hole at the end that is hollow, it is much harder to produce the tone I want. But that's new. And from there, they would have been off to the races. Let's just keep adding more holes. So if you want to build your very own rhubarb flute, here's what you have to do. First, pick the stalk from the rhubarb plant. I believe this one was left out for a season or two, so it's quite weathered. Whereas these ones I pulled out about midsummer, after the flowers had dried out. You can use a hacksaw to cut your piece. Remember to cut a piece with a notch at one end and not on the other. Though this piece isn't perfectly straight, it's quite nice. It has this piece of leaf. So I'm going to find a comfy way to hold it. There we go. So I have my piece. Now I want to add some holes. The first hole I'm going to add is the hole that you blow into. So that needs to go near the closed side of the flute. Not right at the edge, but in a bit. For my hole, I'm going to use a drill. 930 seconds of an inch. Excellent. You can play around with the size. 
now I have my blowhole. If you want a major scale, you're going to have to do some measurements to figure out exactly how far the holes need to be apart. But I'm going to eyeball this and get what I get. So my first hole here, I'm going to actually start to build my holes from this side and build them in. clean up my holes a bit, I am using a small metal file. About three more. It does take a bit of practice to get the proper airstream. Remember, you're trying to blow across the hole rather than into it but try rolling as you blow. Also, I was once taught to imagine that I'm holding a grain of rice in my lips and trying to blow it out. You can usually make multiple flutes from a single stock, and some of them turn out better than others. So was the world's first instrument a flute like this? Maybe. It's totally possible, but we'll probably never know for sure. But it sure is fun to imagine. So find a tube, make a flute, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.